Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos introducing you to a biology class. When most of you study, you probably just look over your notes and or watch these videos, trying to memorize every term that you encounter. A significant portion of the questions that you encounter on tests and quizzes, however, will require that you to apply this information in some way. In this video, I will describe some different study techniques that you can use to see the big picture so that you can relate two seemingly different ideas and apply this information effectively. One very simple, effective thing that you can do to see the big picture is illustrated here. Make a chart. For a unit on biochemistry, we might discuss four different types of biomolecules. Proteins, nucleic acids, carbohydrates, and lipids. For each of these biomolecules, we would discuss a ton of different things. Some examples are provided on the left-hand side. Monomers, or subunits, make up these biomolecules. Important functional groups they possess and different elements that make them up. A chart can help summarize information so that it's a lot easier to remember information. In addition, it can visually show you what are similarities and differences between two given concepts. Venn diagrams are an excellent tool that you can use to describe what key concepts have in common and where they differ. The way that Venn diagrams work is illustrated above. Any overlapping segments of a Venn diagram would represent qualities of the two topics that are similar. Any non-overlapping segments would represent characteristics that are distinct. Not only can they be effective in learning material, but I love to use them on tests and quizzes, which would be another reason to study using these means. Concept maps are another tool that connect different ideas and visually depict information. Concept maps work best when you write nouns or vocabulary terms in bubbles and connect the bubbles with verbs or descriptions. By physically drawing out connections between different concepts, you can help make those connections in your mind and, again, uh, to see the big picture a little bit better. A dichotomous key is an excellent tool if you find something particularly complex or confusing. The best way to create a dichotomous key is to ask questions that can be answered either yes or no. Your yes or no answers will eventually lead you to the correct answer. There was a 20 questions holiday toy a few years back that could tell you anything or anyone that you're thinking about with only 20 questions. The trick is coming up with high quality questions to ask. There are countless other ways that you could effectively study material for this class. If you don't like any of the visual depictions on previous slides, maybe you can try some of these. Making flashcards can be great. The website Quizlet, exhibited on the right, is a wonderful resource to make these online. Another idea is forming study groups. Working together can make studying more fun and sometimes more productive. If you quiz one another, which is the next suggestion, you can learn stuff a lot faster, too. Sometimes, just rewriting notes in your own words can be effective. The act of writing stuff out can improve your retention of all materials in amazing ways. While watching lectures online is important, your book can also be a valuable tool. While the book goes into a tremendous amount of detail, the illustrations alone would make looking at it worthwhile. I would hope that my videos provide you with a useful study tool, but I'm also a huge fan of the videos from Bozeman Biology on YouTube. His videos are amazing and he's pretty easy to listen to. It would be useful to reinforce what we discuss in class as you watch these videos, uh, just from another source. One thing that I'd highly recommend is come see me outside class time. I might be able to answer a question that you'd struggle with yourself for hours without help. That's what I'm here for. Whatever method or methods you choose to employ, uh, make sure that when you're studying, you close that tab for Facebook, Twitter, uh, whatever distracts you. Turn off your cell phone and find your own room where no one will bother you. You'd probably be better off with 15 minutes of quality studying time than an hour when you're distracted. That is the end of this video, overviewing some effective studying techniques that I would recommend. If you're interested in any other videos involving topics related to biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.